Welcome to the Board Game Snobs Podcast. Critically harsh reviews with a touch of class. Put your hands up in the air like you just don't care. But you do care about board games. Thank you for listening to the Board Game Snobs. My name is Jerry. I'm Gabby. And today we are talking about our favorite uh, party games. <laughs> don't do that. I don't even know what that is. Remember to raise your palms upward towards the ceiling? Yes, I know that. But you don't know what ooh, ooh it is? I've heard people do it, but I don't know what started it. I don't either. Who was who invented that? Or we could go... Eh, eh, eh. Now that, I know. And what? that's annoying. That's a DJ, the DJ horn. horn. Yeah. yeah. The air I like, horn. I like you to use it with my mouth, mostly. No. There's certain sounds. <laughs> You're not... What's that guy Police Academy that was always making the sound effects? You're not that guy. No, I don't want to be. Ew, ew, ew. And... Bring no. You got something on your phone? No. No. Nope. You were looking at your I, phone. I was looking at my phone by putting my phone on silent. Is it because I went bring bring and, and you I'm, thought it was I, your phone? That's exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah, that sounded like my Very Samsung good. going off just then. <laughs> good job. I'm going to record Fine. you doing that and make that my ringtone of you. Just FYI. Oh, uh, don't make me mad. I'm going to walk away. Clip, clap, clip, clap, 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 clap. Wait, a horse goes clip, clap. <laughs> <laughs> to say, do you remember uh, on, uh, if you ever watched Monty Python, yes. The Search for the Holy Grail? Yes, yeah, a long time ago. Where they had the coconuts cut in half. Oh, yeah. Clack, clack, you know, they clacked when, like they were <laughs> on a horse. Yeah. The first time I saw that, I thought, how ingenious. When you just don't have a horse, but you want yeah. to feel like you have a horse. I used to do that with your hands. You slap your hands against your chest or your arms. I've never done that. Really? Put your wine glass down. Yeah. And off Gobby rides. Off into the sunset. I owe silver. Really? No. I used to do that all the time when I was a kid. Well, I don't know if that came through on the microphone. I should have. You should, yeah, we'll have to it. amplify your horse hooves. Well, by the time this comes out, we'll have uh, gone through our week of being featured on Podbean. Oh, yeah. I forgot we're going to be featured on Podbean. Or I could hustle and get this out before. No, nah, let's not. Okay. <laughs> uh, I got one that's I just worked on. Should be out last week. Mainly because I don't want us to become so mainstream no. that we become popular and then we're just part of the boys club. I don't want to do that. No. Because then people will start expecting quality content. No. And regularity. <laughs> and knowledge. Knowledge. And a uh, more consistent opinion about things. No. We like don't want very... that. Missed me with that. <laughs> I like to be loose cannons. Yes, yes. That's where we operate best. Yeah, we're in the shadows. We don't even like... Sometimes we'll, I'll like have something on my mind, and I'll bring it up slightly, then forget all about it about halfway through because we've gotten sidetracked about something else. And then some games, like, we just barely graze in discussions. We don't even talk about who makes them or anything. Or how they're played sometimes. Even. <laughs> we just reference them. <laughs> I like that we've done... I like pretty much that we have li I've listened to some of our old podcasts and uh -huh. we actually did a review of I was like, hey, do you remember this? You're like, yeah, that was great. Yeah, it was. And then we start talking about something else. Uh, we just uh, give you a brief overview of whether or not we liked it. And we may go into more detail or not. Well, if you're listening to us, then you n must know by now that our, our tastes are similar, then you can trust us. And if they are not, then... Uh, side with me. No, no. What? They don't side with you. They'll side with somebody else. Why? Just because it's the way it works. You're either with me or you're against me. So we're talking about party games, which are my least favorite types of games. Really? Yes. Fun fact. You don't like fun? It, so you don't like that fact? I just made a... <laughs> A fact of which I do not like. Not, no, not all, it's true. Not all facts are fun. Like, no, like you not. realize that more people get killed by falling coconuts each year than by sharks. I've heard that before. I've heard that before. And, and also, diarrhea has what a about? devastating effect on humanity. Dysentery? Uh, yes. I, is that what that would That's be? That's what everybody the on, term going, is called? going on the Oregon Trail died of. The dysentery. Really? Yep. I did not know that was what dysentery was. Yes, diarrhea. Really? They so is have, that the medical term for it? It's just, no, it's a type of, why are we talking about this? It's a type of diarrhea that's <laughs> particularly know. explosive. <laughs> and it dehydrates you to such an extent that you finally just give away to hypovolemia. Well, you went dark. And so I talked about what I knew of people dying of. How that I... most people just don't think about. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> we went from party games to dying of dysentery. Well, uh, let me say, a lot of party games are like dysentery. <laughs> because it seems like. It's easy to, uh, I don't know how I'm going to use weird this trying. analogy, and I'm, I'm just looking for it. No segue? Yes, no segue no available segue. for you? There's no segue for dysentery and If only games. Job was here. No. 
Did uh, it? What? Really? Who? Do you watch Arrested Development? I do not. What? I watched it a long time ago. Job was always on that Segway. Oh, Job, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he wrote the Segway. Yeah, that's my hero. <laughs> I like him. Somebody will appreciate that. Yeah, but not us. Arrested Development was a good show, though. Party games. <laughs> party games. We are going to briefly discuss party games that we feel are, at the very least, decent, and some that we have fallen out of love with over the years. So if you're just now listening to us and you're trying to build up your party game collection, I believe that you should have at least one or two party games available to you. Gabby, it looks like you're yes. ready. Go ahead. No, I was just pulling them up on Board Game Geek. Oh. I know what I have in my possession. I do as well. And I know uh, there's some on Board Game Geek that we've had in our possession that we no longer have. Yes. I, another fun fact. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, well, actually, this is not that fun. Uh, it's more of moderately interesting. Okay. My first, <laughs> One of my first modern party games that I ever owned was a little game called Coup. Which was the first hidden role game I'd ever played. Now, Coup is very interesting because you get dealt two cards, kind of like in Blackjack. There are about five different roles throughout the game, if I'm not mistaken. Those two cards are your lives. If you end up losing both your lives, you're out. And you basically are taking actions, claiming to have this particular card in your hand. For instance, if you're an ambassador, if you have an ambassador card in your hand, it allows you to swap out your cards in the deck. And so you basically just declare to everybody at the table, I have an ambassador card, and I'm swapping out my cards. And somebody can look you dead in the eye and try to determine if you're lying. And if you're lying and you get called out, you lose a life, you flip up a card. It, it, it's just, it was a very simple, easy game to understand, but there was some gaminess to it, if that makes sense. It was something yeah. that I felt like. But the one thing that killed Coup for me is that it, the best person doesn't always win, i.e. I never, I didn't win that much. <laughs> Um, and it was killed by another game, which I'll mention here hard later. Hard to be humble. Uh, Coup, the first time I played it, me, you, Enrique, DJ, uh, Bubba. And I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Uh, it was kind of almost... Uh, oh, it's hard to describe. It's taken from the Resistance universe. So you have a hidden role of the Resistance characters. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I think that's right. Well, the Resistance and Coup are by the same people. Okay, they? maybe that's just what I'm thinking. Which I enjoyed the Resistance as well, but it was also the same art or whatever. But yeah, then I tried to explain it to another group of people, and you never know how "quote unquote" gamey or oh, game is. I like that term, gamey. Until you're trying to explain to people, because it's like I was like, "Oh, Coup, that's that's a super simple game." Then you try to explain it to people, and people that aren't, you know. Smart. <laughs> no. Uh, Attentive. Hobby gamers or Hobbyist. designer gamers, whatever no. you want to call it. They're called losers. You're so judgmental. I'm not judgmental. I'm telling it like it is. I <laughs> oh, is that what it's That's called? What it is. And yeah, it's a little more difficult because like the things, it's just hard. Plus, also, I'm not good at describing things. You're not. As I'm doing right now. You're not. <laughs> so that might be part of the problem. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. As you started talking, I like, I, I took a drink of my coffee and I literally have no good idea what game you're talking about. <laughs> I'm no, no, no. But yeah, so Koo is good. I still have it in my collection. It plays up to six. So we said six or more is considered a party game as far as we are concerned. Wow. I think a party game to me is any game that's lighthearted enough and that can include, well, yeah, I guess at least at least five to six people. I mean, I know there's heavy, like Viticulture plays six, but it's not that's a not party, party, game, game. party game. Party game. We're talking about in the spirit of party games, yeah. but Coup plays six. <laughs> and you can get expansions that make it up, boop it, bump it up to more. Boop well, it up to more. You shouldn't boop it up to more. <laughs> it's okay. okay. All right. Coup on the list. Oh, so, do well, you still have it in your possession? I do have it in my possession, but I never play it because it was killed by okay. Skull. And so, I think Skull is a much more accessible party also game. Also plays six people. Yes. Uh, does it play six people or just five? I can't no, remember. it plays up to six. Uh, for some reason in my brain, I always think five, but it plays six. Okay. Well, just add more coasters. And if you add more coasters, you could, I was thinking this. You could literally have a piece of paper, mark X on one side and nothing on the other side and make that the game. I played I played Coup one time with a deck of cards and I just took out three you number know. I took out three number cards and a face card and said, all right, there you go. That's it. And handed that to each person. Because the skulls might be off-putting to some people. They're like, oh, what's this? Yeah, the, you know. Oh. This death? Dead. Dear, dear, I think we had this discussion before on our previous podcast. Yeah. What's the Day of the Dead? 
De La Mortes? Something like that. I don't know. Anyway. Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> no, my mother's still alive. Mother-in-law. Oh, no, I love oh, my snap. mother-in-law. I do to mine as well, to all those listening. You like your mother-in-law? I love my mother-in-law. She treats me very well, except for when we were first dating. You were dating your mother <laughs> That's awkward. So you broke up with her and be like, oh, no, I'll get you back. You got any kids? That was, that's really messed up. <laughs> no. Perhaps you should, you're terrible at describing things. Why are you laughing so hard? That was not that good joke. <laughs> that was not that funny. It was not that funny. <laughs> when me and my wife were first dating. Yes. My mother-in-law come up to me. It was refilling my radiator with wait a uh, minute with what do you call it fluid radiator fluid <laughs> what, what, coolant whatever coolant it's called. yes why you was know, she just, why was your mother performing she, maintenance on your car she loves to work and, and so you loves, just popped her and said hey she loves to work. taking your daughters and taking your daughter out to Chili do you <laughs> mind topping me off I mean what does that work kick my tires check, and check the, my radiator. the belt squeaking too she does all that wow. she loves to maintain things she is a she just works non-stop so she just thought you might need some coolant you know how gina's always vacuuming or something when you yeah. come over she's always working she's always busy she gets it from her mom her okay. mom stays busy doing something she is a hard worker when me and gina first started dating she was talking i don't know why she just went out she like asked me have you checked your radiator fluid lately i'm like uh, no i'm not i don't i don't care i don't know anything about cars so she goes out there, and she has the green fluid. And I said, that looks like limeade. And she said, yeah, you want to drink it? <laughs> and she tried to kill me right off the bat. Hmm. But ever since then, we're good. She takes care of my cars. <laughs> I noticed that your car was detailed all the time. I wondered why your car was she, always clean. She cooks very well for me. Wow. Uh, speaking of cars, one of my favorite. Uh, but That's a fine example of what we just said. <laughs> we didn't talk about anything about school. Well. We what? did. Did we, we talk about it. Skull? <laughs> Skull's an awesome game. Uh, but speaking of cars, one of my favorite. Oh my uh, God. One of my so you're just going to blow right past Skull. We've discussed right Skull in the past. Where I'm segueing uh, this. If we had marked stuff in the past, I'm going to start with our, the last podcast. Which is the last one? BGG's Low Lights by Jack, Jerry. By Jerry. I'm going to try and put the games discussed in the. Notes and disgusting notes. games. Pit uh, pit crew. Right, pit so crew. What, okay. I love pit crew. <laughs> I'm tired of talking about your housekeeping okay, and your I'm mother-in-law and your coolant. How you I used was going to back date, to skull. How you used to date your mother-in-law and you made it super weird. I want to talk about pit you crew. You made it weird. Pit crew. Pit crew. Let me write that down for I, our show notes. Oh, we're doing show notes now. That's what I'm saying. I told you, we are coming way too mainstream. (laughs) We're having to do show notes. People are like all about like, oh, why don't you list the stuff you talk about? (laughs) Like, miss me with that list and stuff. Why we got to list everything? If you want a list. That was Joe G, I think. If you want a list, there's a, you go, that's the Dice Tower thing. They do a top 10 list like every third day of the week. Well. Our top 10 favorite lists. And you know what? They're successful. They're not successful. They just have an audience. (laughs) They're successful. They raised a quarter of a million dollars on their Kickstarter. So you think money defines your success? Oh, it sure helps. It doesn't mean. <laughs> oh, no, it doesn't. I will. Help. I will go down knowing. What do you define as success? I have not. This thought. is at least our third podcast straight. We've mentioned the Dice Tower. Who? <laughs> I define success by one not selling out. I have my okay, integrity. Not selling out. Two. I spend time playing games that I want to play, not games that I'm either paid to play or I feel like I have to play, so I can well, review them. And that's why we'll never be. Big and popular. And Go ahead. Three. I don't have to always keep up this persona of being something. Like if we were an actual board game reviewers, we'd have to have put on a show. Like you'd like have what? To, like you'd have to wear a hat and do funny things that were not you, and that become your thing. Zoinka, zoinka. See, stop. See you later, folks. No, stop. That's my catch line. We're cutting that. That's my catch phrase. No, we're cutting that. Zoinka, that was, zoinka. That was terrible. That's my catch phrase. That's not a catch. We're starting phrase. it now. And see, this is why. Whenever you used to introduce me from now on, I'm going to go, Zoinka, Zoinka. Uh, this is why I couldn't work with you. Zoinka, Zoinka. Let me write that down in the show notes. This is why we are never going to be. Our podcast gets progressively worse the longer we record. Just saying. Well, that's why I like to do short. No, no, do short. 40 minutes. That's what we're shooting for. Pit Crew is an awesome game. Pit Crew by Jeff Engelstein. Um, G off.
Edelstein. Gough. And the object of the game is basically you're performing maintenance on a race car using cards. So you have your little... It's board. basically the old game of speed, if uh, you ever played that. Yes, and I love speed. Uh, not too. the drug. Me too. Uh, but no. you... Fentermines are good, though. When you I play, lost lots of weight on Fentermines. And it will help you play Pit and Crew, because you got to be really, really, really fast. Hey. Uh, with Pit Crew, as you're with a partner trying to uh, meet the numbers on your card, like your tire will be like a 13, if that makes sense. Yes. So you have to lay out cards in sequence up to 13. Is that correct? It's been a I while. believe that's it. Yeah. I don't know. No, I had to break out the game and check it out. It's been a while since I've played it. <laughs> but we, we get the idea. Sequential numbers, go. I like. Oh, my bad. Was that you making that noise? <laughs> that was really good. Talk about Pit Crew while I talk on the phone. There's nothing to talk about Pit Crew. You I can't. I can't. Oh, go ahead. No, let's leave. Go talk on the phone. Talk on the phone. This is why we will never have an audience, because Gobby just left the studio, which the studio happens to be the, his extra bedroom with, with his signed uh, autograph copy of the blonde chick from Battlestar Galactica hanging up on the wall. And uh, I'm back. Captain Sisko, who Benjamin, back. what was the guy that played Captain Sisko? Avery Brooks. Avery Brooks. But yeah, didn't even have to look. I know. Well, you have his photo up there. Well, uh, but apparently I asked the... My friend, when she got that autograph, I said, have him write, uh, yes, Captain Moraga or something. And he said to her, she asked him to write that. He said to her, if he wanted that written, he should have come himself. Nice. <laughs> he did. I was like, whoa, wow. he's pretty hardcore. Well, I, well, Don't mess with Cisco. Look, he didn't take care of Cardassians for that <laughs> long to, to come to put up with you. Man. But I mostly remember him from... Uh, what was the show he was on? He was almost like an equalizer type character. Oh, I don't remember him in anything but that. Oh, he'll really? Always, he'll always be Captain It was Cisco like an 80s show. But no, anyway, no. Go ahead. Okay. Moving on from Pit Crew. Pit Coo? Crew? Pit Kit? Pit Crew? Just stop it. Coo? Skull? Pit Crew. What's next? Probably my favorite deduction game that's also a party game that we have not played in a long time, and I hold you responsible for this, is Deception Murder at Hong Kong. I've played it more recently than you. And tell me about it. I love it. It's very exciting. <clears throat> um, instead of like in Mafia, where you're... Which is okay. Which is okay, a.k.a. also known as Werewolf, however you want to describe it. Which Werewolf, according to Board Game Geek Top 100, is 98. What? It's 98. Werewolf, werewolf is fun. Uh, I love Werewolf slash Mafia. We always play it the Mafia way. Uh, actually, Mafia is probably what got me into this style of gaming. I do like Mafia. The hidden... The hidden role. Hidden role. Uh, but Deception Murder in Hong Kong is very good. You have all these cards in front of you. Uh, I think you can do four to six cards in front of you, and they're all items. And you'll do, it's like resistance. You say, all right, everybody close your eyes. Okay. The uh, murderer will open his eyes, pick two of the cards. Basically, it's they're supposed to be different, but they're kind of the same. If you've played it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't played it, just trust me. It's a good game. So you'll pick these two cards. Then you say, okay, uh, depending on how you play, you can have an accomplice for the murderer. And then you have a uh, person that you know... <laughs> that knows who the murderer is. So they'll open their eyes and I'll say, okay, and I'll point to the murderer. Kind of like the resistance. Mm -hmm. You have the spies, you have the other people. And then depending again on the game you play, you might have an accomplice for the detective. But anyway, so then everybody opens their eyes and the person that knows is trying to lead everyone to the proper person. Right? Right. <laughs> I fall asleep on me yet. No, I'm good. I got this. So... He's trying to be nonchalant about, I think Jerry is the murderer. So he knows who the murderer is, but the problem is he doesn't know which two cards he's chosen. So that's the evidence. So you have to get the evidence just right. You have to name those two cards. Basically, like, clue, you have to say, I think he did it with this Coat and hanger this. and a hammer. Yes. If you don't get that right, then the person, uh, the the forensic scientist, that's the person taking the lead in the game, that's the narrator. The CSI. He says, even if you guess 
one of them right now i've done forgot how it plays i know you just you have confused <clears throat> but us it's all. real vague it's like it's vague. real hard to get it right much like yourself but, yes but nonetheless i have the base game and every time we've played it it's been good i like again, it again i guess i've played it with good people all i think i've played it five times now it's worked out every time really every time people are into it they're into the characters it's fun now if the person actually gets picked if the two cars he chose people say i think he did it with this and this and even if that's right he still has a chance to pick out the witness no that's the part that i like pick out the witness so if he says i think you're the one that is the witness you know yes you've known all the, all along yeah so you can't be too obvious that, that's the part of the game i like the that's best. what makes that's it a little interesting like the best. deception I'm, murder hong kong is probably if i was to do a top whatever it's probably in my top five for sure. Top five of whatever. Nice. Probably. <laughs> nice. Well, it's your top whatever. Well, deception. <laughs> and I like I like donuts. Cheeseburgers. Bagels. Nissan Maxima. And Deception Runner Hong Kong. There you go. Top my five top whatever. Five whatever. <laughs> we need to do that one day. Our top five whatever. I <laughs> just have a list of five things that we just really enjoy. Done. All right. Um, write that down. Write Put that, that down. in the show notes. Top five whatever. Uh, I like Secret Hitler or Secret Sith if you oh, reskin it go. off BGG. If you don't like the Nazi uh, liberal theme, they do the uh, the Secret Sith. I thought that was cool. Finding out who the Sith is. I like have, that idea. Having a Star Wars, uh, Star Wars theme That'd be to cool. it. Cool. Like that's cool. I enjoyed Secret Hitler or Secret Sith more than what I um, more than I should because it's it's a broken game in my opinion. It doesn't work out each round. There are some, but the game is so quick. That when you have a bad game, it's like 10 minutes of your life, and that's it, and it's yeah. done, and you move on to the next, and the next one might be awesome. I don't think I liked that one all that much. I thoroughly enjoyed it, but I, I will say that it was not... It killed the resistance for me. It was not... It, oh. It's not a solid game in terms of its mechanics. It did not kill resistance. It killed resistance to be straight up. There's no reason I'd ever play resistance again. I w- <laughs> Never again. Viva la resistance. But Resistance plays more people. Secret Hitter only plays... No, it plays a lot. It plays oh, like it 10. Does? Oh, okay. It plays more, almost more than Resistance. Um, <clears throat> have you... did On number 92 on Board Game Geek, did you ever play Strike at BGG? Where you oh, the yeah. The, the, little, the little bowling game? Yeah, I love that game. That's cool. That's number 92. Okay. I don't own it. You don't own it. But it was fun. But it plays... Oh, it only plays five players. And it's a party game? Uh, it's listed under BGG's uh, party guys. All right, I want to go. Hey, 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 let me. All right, stop. Just oh, stop. Wow. I want to okay. tell you about BGG go lists. Go ahead. Go ahead. You cannot go by that if you're new to the to the board game community to get on BGG and to look at the lists and to go up the, off of their top ten. That is just wholesale manipulation. There is just all right. For Jerry, instance, Jerry coming hard through the ages. Go. Two different editions were in the top ten at one point in time. You cannot tell me through the ages is one of the greatest board games of all time. You cannot tell me that. Uh, no, wait, wait. Did you say you cannot tell me it's not is one of the greatest board games of all time? Yeah, it's good, but it's not great. I need to teach you how to play it. I've played the, the app more than I have the actual board game. Uh, but it's just not. I just don't think it's this. The, pe- people who like to vote and who are active in the community is what drives up these games. Mind oh, you, just Peng because Nam- Pandemic Legacy, Legacy Season 1 was the number one game forever. Oh. Yeah, let's play Pandemic. Okay, well, I want to exaggerate. 24 times at the most with slight variations. And that's the best game ever? Best game ever? No. Best game ever? Pandemic. Oh, yeah. There's, oh, oh yeah. Oh, don't get us started. Pandemic. Don't love get us started. Pandem- don't you just love that Pandemic? I hate Pandemic. I mean, I don't hate it. It's a, it's what I. It has its place. It has its place. It is a good cooperative game. It's good to introduce people to. It's a nice solo game, even. It's a nice little puzzle. Yes. But it is. Don't it, tell me it's the best game of all time. No. No. It's definitely not. Wow. It came out on that one. I know. You came out okay. pretty hard. <clears throat> Zeke one Garcia you, somewhere is crying. One that you uh, have in your collection that is recent to you. To me. Cockroach Poker. Tell me about it. It's a kid's game more than just a party game, but you have Why a... Why do you say it's a kid's game? Because it's it's designed to be played with small children. Um, How small? Well, like... Three feet and under? No, I'm talking like six, seven, eight years old. Oh. It's funner with that. I played it with adults, and it was not as good. 
Uh, but basically, you have a handful of cards. The cards have all these different bugs, cockroaches, spiders, stink bugs, whatever they might be. You lay a card down and you pass it to the next person face down. You say, this is a scorpion. And they can call you out and say, you're lying. Or they can agree with you and say, yes, it probably is. Or they can just pass it on to the next person. The thing is, is that if they call, if you're wrong, if they catch you in the lie or, or tell you it's true, then you end up having to put the card face up in front of you. You get four of a kind, I believe it is, and you're dead. You're over. The game's over. So there's only like one loser and everybody else is a winner. So you're purposely feeding people cards, trying to get them a set of four cards of a certain type of bug. It was fine. It's a, it's for younger kids. It's not something that I would play. I'd rather play a trick, actual trick taking game. And I do not like trick taking no. games. I am not a fan of trick taking games. No. I remember diamonds. I remember you mm, teaching me diamonds. Yes. Nothing wrong with it. But it was just, it was, I'm not a trick. Hearts, I, spades, spades, it's all the same it, thing. They're all the same thing. They're all the same thing. I'm just not big into trick-taking games. But that being said, it just wasn't just the greatest but party yet, game. It's in your collection. Well, I have it for my kids. I have little kids. Oh, okay. Dead last. I am like the only person that I think here recently that had any fun with dead last. I do not know why it has gotten so much hate. We discussed it in our earlier podcasts. Yes, and I don't know why it got so much hate. If you don't like long, drawn-out versions of Mafia, play Dead Last. It's as quick and to the point. You just yes. basically pick a person. Yes. You try to be sneaky about it. Say, hey, we're voting this person out. And you think you're going to be successful? Bam, it's you. I just like the fact that you're sitting at a table you. and you're coming up with trying to convince people <laughs> it is so that crazy. are right in front of you to do something <laughs> to somebody else. And I mean, it is. It has, there is. The game creates tension immediately. It's, it's good. I the, love it. The, it's it's kind of like how with Happy Salmon, you get out of breath just running around doing stupid stuff. Yes. Dead last, as soon as you're at the table and you have to lean over to someone and say, hey, <laughs> hey, let's, 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 let's knock off Bubba, vote for Bubba. And you're trying to like, it, it just immediately, things get tense. People start yelling. It's At quick, some point in time, fast. you get killed off when you are 100% sure. Yes. Everybody votes for you. I, and the you last game it. I played, I could have sworn several times throughout the game. I was like, to my left, hey, vote for Brown. To my right, hey, vote for Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. We're good. Bam. <laughs> it was me. They voted me out. And well, but what's good is if you feel it's you, you can play these, I forget what they're ambush. called. Ambush. Ambush cards. You can play the ambush card, and if the majority have voted for you, and you've played the ambush card, you, you played correctly. You survive. You then get to pick someone else that voted for you to boot out of the game. But if you pick the ambush card, and it was indeed not you, you no, basically shot you're yourself. Out. You're, out, you're out. Which is which is hilarious. It's good. It is quick fast fun and just talking about it i've forgotten how much i enjoyed this game oh, i remember it's been a while i remember the first time I played it we played with the, the full compliment yeah it's been a long time and you're just yelling it. at people i took it to work and people are vicious yeah it's a vicious game and that's one thing i didn't realize and it hurt some people's feelings that's what i was going to say it was vicious we played with some people the last time i played it we played with some people that are pretty sensitive Pansies? sometimes i'm sorry what <laughs> No. I was talking about flowers. They're just a little more sensitive than other folks. That was not very inclusive of me. So far, I have You're talked about very, pansies, you are losers, exclusive. and people who aren't hobbyists. I'm very You're, sorry. I'm not being very... I, I realize... You're that being very snobbish. I'm being very snobbish. And although that is the title of our podcast, and that is truly how I feel, we might have some weak constitution people <laughs> listening to us. If you are one of those... I, I extend to you this olive branch. All right, false apology. Go ahead. I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm sorry you feel that way. <laughs> A more uh, perfunctory apology you could not get. What? No. That come from the heart. False. From my you cannot say, I'm sorry you feel my that kidneys. way. No? You're supposed to say, I'm sorry. I may, I messed up. I didn't mess up. But dead last, we played it with somebody, and they were like, they like got hurt every time you yeah. got voted. You voted them out. Yeah, they look sad <laughs> because sometimes you might vote for the same person two or three times in a row. Hey, out, those, those are the people that I go after. It's like, <laughs> once you get that blood in the water, you, you kind of know <laughs> you weed out the weak. You, real you quick. weed out the weak. Okay. Call the weak. Uh, I'm looking at one here that was in your collection. You kickstarted. We played it. Why do you got to bring this up? I know you're going to bring up something. That some poor Kickstarter. A Kickstarter you were all about. Yep. You brought it to game day. Okay. 
We played it. Don't oh, remember yeah, it. This is terrible. What is it? Tortuga. Oh, 1776. Tortuga. 1667. You Sorry. Were close. I was thinking about the independence. Uh, oh but uh, yeah, it's a hidden role game. But not really. Not really. And there's just. It's, it's one dumb. Of, I don't understand how it's it, within the first. It comes in a neat box. Okay. There. It's sold. Within the first play, you have to choose which side you're on. It's very and if you. If you're on one side, you pretty much definitely have to act a certain way, or else uh, you're hurting yourself in the game. So the hidden role is really kind of pointless. That was that was very much pointless. But it plays two to nine players, and it, we it, played with six, and it, and was it wasn't sold. any good. It's been sold. I will, and I will say this: that was truly a game that I think that if it had been less complicated, in its little bitty. It was trying to do too many things at once. The game was not particularly complicated in its rules. It just tried to be hidden movement, not hidden movement, hidden role, and then movement, and then all teams, and all these various things. And It just wasn't. It should have been more simple, or simplified. i tell you what, another game that I liked more, and I haven't got to play it here recently, but because you own it, it's an OG game. Osprey? Yes. Aliens and outer, Escape from Alien. Wait. Yeah. Escape from the Aliens and Outer Space. That was such a stupid game when you first got it. And you have these little race markers and you're moving things around. And I just didn't think it's going to be fun. It's the quick, super streamlined version of Letters from Whitechapel. Yes. yes. And you're just running around. And I think it was, I think that the the atmosphere of it, I just remember you were the alien and you kept making alien noises every time you were chasing us. <laughs> it, was, it, was, uh, it was very awkward. Uh, but it was just. And then I kept busting in on rims. I was like, "Kill!" <laughs> and there was nobody. Nobody in there. was in there. <laughs> like literally, I walked in a straight line to the to the escape pod, and you're just running. You, you're serpentining back and forth. This kill, kill here, kill here. Are you here? And I was like, "No, I'm just." I literally walked straight to the door, opened the door very slowly, and got in. Uh, that has also been a successful game with yes. people that uh, I didn't even play in this game. The but DJ took it to a game night with some other dudes that are video gamers. They were having a video game party. What's they were that? playing. What were they playing? Uh, like Pokemon? FIFA and stuff. FIFA? Sports games. The soccer? But he took Escape. Actually, Frank... Okay, it doesn't matter who took it, but he took Escape. They loved it. Really? They loved it. And they keep wanting to play it, and I keep not having a chance to get back to them. Wow. I love it when people take something, and it's awesome. I think uh, I played... Uh, and it plays, I think it plays up to eight players, two to eight. It doesn't, it's not a party game, but I played hot. you play two players? One's the alien and one's the it says two to eight. person. You're yeah, just chasing me around. I'm Riley. Ripley. Riley. Riley. Who's Riley? <laughs> I'm the male version of Ripley. Of <laughs> <laughs> Ripley's cousin, Riley. Escape from Aliens. That's Letters from Whitechapel play six. Which is Which not a party is game. Everyone, it, no, I wouldn't know. No, it's, it's not. It. But it's it's <sighs> barely even a good game. False. <laughs> it's tiresome. It's, it's in one of my favorite games of all time. It's an amazing game. Favorite games of all time. It does play six, but I would not consider it, it a party not game. A party game. There is no fun being had. No one's going whatever as you go it around fun. simulating the death fun. of women of the night. In such a gruesome game that see that's something right there. It's letters from Whitechapel. No, that's not dissected. Just enjoy it. The theme really puts a soft-hearted person like myself off. Oh, whatever. We've seen how soft-hearted you are calling people names throughout the podcast. I haven't called anybody any names. Yeah, someone's going to call me out on the Twitter. No. That's no, okay. No, nobody communicates with us. No. Nobody will even send us an email. No. <laughs> We're begging you. We're begging you to yeah. Uh, I had an idea for people. Oh, I know. What's that? I was going to say, if people want to contact us, at board game snobs at Gmail, board game snobs at Twitter, board game snobs on Instagram. Uh, me and board game diner, we kind of go back and forth on Instagram. We communicate. Board game diner. He's Giuseppe. Oh, Giuseppe. That's his Instagram name. I'd be giving out his Instagram. Uh, he's a friend friend of the show. Oh. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, nobody communicates with us. We don't receive any ratings. We don't need. We don't need ratings. I know you want to be off in the edges. Um, we're, we're in the podcast dark web. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do want to contact us, please do. 
If you want to know something about us, no, email us. I'm not giving out personal information. Ask Jerry some personal information. No, I'm not giving out personal information. How many kids do you have? I'll give you advice. What's the last four of your social? Or driver's license. I'll take either one. This has not been fun. I thought having a podcast about party games would be lighthearted and no fun. No way. But rather, this has not, this has not been fun. This is, just wasn't fun because I don't like party games. Oh, you made me talk you about so, things. Well, we aren't. haven't even discussed half of them. Well, it's because half of them aren't that good. <laughs> I talked about the ones that were good. If, okay, well, let me just cut to the chase. Cut to the ch- Why don't you? <laughs> no, let me bloat this. Some we're more. on let's go now, number 97 <laughs> on my list. I was like, really? Okay. Of, uh, number 51. Oh. On Board Game Geek. Party games. Happy Salmon. It's all right. It's an activity. It's ne- fun. Next. It's fun at parties. Next. Happy You're Salmon. You're so difficult. Happy You're Salmon. so difficult to do a podcast with. That's your with. gang name, isn't it? Happy Salmon. That's my what? Your gang name. Gang name? You mean gaggle? No. Oh, yeah. Call back. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Time's up. Nope. Like it. Nope. Own it. Like it. Wow. Happy Salmon. Spyfall. You have that. Uh, I actually enjoy it. Yeah, I don't. Well, there you go. <laughs> Two rooms in a boom played it. Wow, I love two wombs in the boom. But two you, gotta, <laughs> you got to cut that. Did I say that's two wombs? Uh, no, two wombs? No, no. I can't. You know I have trouble. My speech impediment. You know I have trouble. I slur my words and sometimes wombs and R's and all that. Two, two rooms in a boom. That's a whole different show. Is a great convention game. Two rooms in a boom. Great convention game. So I got to meet say. the co-designer. Michelle. The co-designer, not even the main designer. Well, big I, deal. Sh- there is multiple designers, hmm. so they're all co-designers. The, so there's no main designer. No, that's how they work. You put three people in the box, not one the main guy, and these people helped. So you, if you have a host and a co-host, is he the same as the host? No. Oh, so it's different. No, I am the host. So who's the host? Uh, I think <laughs> it's very obvious. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Okay. Concept. Terrible game. Terrible concept. <laughs> I don't like it. It's uh, a party game. We've tried playing it, but it just doesn't work. It says 4 to 12. Wow. All right, but again, cutting to the chase. There's lots of party games out there. Apples to apples. Oh. Blah. Pictionary. Oh. Dixit. Instead of Pictionary, play Telestrations. I don't play any of them. How about just go to the Goodwill? You can buy all those for cheap. Uh, uh, quite a few of them you can. Of my favorite party games, however, I do enjoy Telestrations. If you're going to have people that don't play games. They're over 65. <laughs> they don't play games. But if they enjoy it, what about, oh, that only plays five. Time's up. Telestrations with families that you have over to your house and they've never played games before. You can play that. I'm Dixit. Not, I'm not big on that. families. If you get some people that are willing to play, uh, code names. That's code a good names is, one. is pretty decent. But if you get some people that are willing to get a little more gamey. Mm. Coo. Deception Murder in Hong Kong, Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space. That would be my recommendations. If I had to give recommendations, and my recommendations are consistently better than copies, I would definitely say Deception, pretty good. Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space, OG, that is really good. I would so, skip to on... To the exact same I've said. I would skip on Coup, though, and go with either Skull... Ah, oh, my bad. Forgot Skull. And, of course... Down. People go back and forth on Resistance being a good game. I'm almost leaning towards, if I had to pick one of those, either doing Secret Hitler or Dead Last. Mm-hmm. Oh, Dead Last is good. Dead Last is good. As long as you have people that don't get their feelings hurt. Yeah. So if you're playing with a bunch of easily yes. sensitive people, perhaps don't play something called Dead Last. Agreed. Well, that was a good podcast, I think. For what it was, considering that you're making me talk about something I don't want to talk about. Jerry hates fun. I hate Remember party that. games. I like a fine euro. What do you like? <sighs> Not party games. Okay. Well, that's 40 minutes. That's about good. Follow so, us on Twitter. Or don't. Instagram. Jerry doesn't care. Tumblr. He never checks it. Board Game go- 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 Guild. Uh, your guild on Board Game Geek. Until next time. Gmail Gobby, us. The primary host. At the Board Games Knobs. My co-host, Jerry. I'm Jerry, the Supreme Allied Commander host. <laughs> and We'll see you next time. Bye.